When it comes to dollars performers, most of us come up with some convincing live sets, but the sound quality sometimes is lacking a bit, and I understand it. Either you're a musician or you're a sound engineer, so those two things don't go hand in hand if you don't know exactly what it is you're looking for. And buying all these different synths is also going to be a bit of a problem if you don't know how to set the levels right. So these are some simple tricks to enhance your sound quality. That's going to be today's video. Are you ready for that? So let's go do it right now. Hey, check it out, I'm Analog Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. If this is your first time here, welcome. Don't hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Hang out till then, this video will tell you all about the Mixer project. It's only two months out before we get a prototype, so that is very uh, amazing. And I'll tell you all about Discord and Patreon and the community that we're building, so feast your ears on that. I am a firm, avid believer that you should not make things more difficult or complicated if there is no need for you to do so. Which means that most synthesizers and most presets on those synths sound okay out of the box. However, things start to become very confusing if you're starting to add more and more stuff into the mix. And sometimes there are a few things that we just don't think about about ear fatigue, for instance. If you work in your sound for an extended amount of time, things that you thought were absolutely sounding great and were probably sounding great in the beginning, you're going to start to doubt yourself. So you wanna just change stuff and that's the time when you screw stuff up. Now, I'm going to go over how I set up my levels, how I look for sounds and how I make it convincing, sort of like jigsaw puzzle almost, where everything goes hand in hand. By the time I'm done with creating the track, I'm also done with the way the sound is, right? So, it might be kicking in an open door at so certain points, but still, I see a lot of people make those mistakes. And when we do the Kitchen Club events, we've got people just showing up and you just see that the sound is just not there. The performance is going to be amazing, but for the crowd on the floor, bigger and louder is better. You can get your sound to just sound better without it, you know, being overdriven and stuff. And during your performance, you can also see that the set certainly migrates into, you know, it goes a little bit louder, it goes a little bit wider. So how to overcome those problems is something we're going to get into today. You ready? Let's go ahead to the live set. Let me show you on how to work that. All right, gang, now it's pretty, pretty simple. I've got a beat set up and I want you to really, really um, pay attention to what it is that I'm doing. Now, obviously, in order to make sure that you get the best of what's happening. If you've got a small mixer like this and it has got microphone preamps, one trick to do is to stick the kick drum on a separate channel, which is something you should always do. But there is a difference in to how the line input sounds and how the microphone preamp sounds. So what I have done is I've done three things on the Akai MPC Live right here. Okay, so I'm basically you all using almost all the outputs. If this is not possible, if you've got something else, then you know, you have to work around it, but ideally it would be cool for you to split out the drums. I'm not going to go overboard and split everything out, but I want my kick to be separate. And I've got a cable that goes into an XLR into the preamp of the desk, because most desks, they stress themselves to make sure that the microphone inputs are something different from the line input. So you get a bit of an advantage there and it sounds a little bit better, right? So now with the kick drum, the way I've set it up now is that I've got uh, different synths going. I've got the Mini Log XD, Subsequent 37 and the Mini Tar just for the bass. And there's a Strymon Black Sky over here connected to the Subsequent 37. There's an Acid Box over here going from the output three and four from the Akai MPC Live, you can follow it around. So really, stereo output, that's where it all starts. If we just focus on this thing first, okay? Now, I'm gonna play you the beat, which is not going to play anything because all the faders are down. We'll start with the kick drum, okay? Now, I will make this kick available so that you can use it in your own uh, setup and you can try something out. It's not 
it's something that I have created myself. It's a kick that I found out of a pack. I will just explain to you why I think this kick is amazing. This kick consists of two dominant sounds. There is this, what I call the belly of the kick. That's not an overdrive. And then there's this thud. This, this mid-range thing, this, this tick. So a good kick consists out of two or maybe three sounds. Sometimes a little bit of noise that goes over here. So you guys that sample kicks out of, 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 of records, you get an extra sort of like grit. Don't go overboard and do everything meticulously and just like clean stuff up. That, that hiss and that noise, it can help you out in the end if you're trying to gel different sounds together, yeah? In the crossover points, we'll get to that in a second now. Um, this kick drum, and I've got a crackling um, fader. This kick drum, I love it. As you can see, I'm not even equalizing stuff, so I'm going to see if I can make an effort to teach you how to level things up. So that's the kick, coming out of track one, because as you can hear, I've done it before, I can mute it and just take it out. So that's why my um, um, fader is crackling. Then again, this is not the most expensive uh, mixer in the world, so it serves a purpose. If you just use it for studio purposes, it's amazing. Okay, rest of the drums. mute this now in terms of mixing and I, I was going to throw uh, the frequency spectrum on the screen and tell you how it was working and I thought like you know let's keep it very simple everything that I've selected in terms of drums has been leveled to be on the same level everything is a hundred percent right so the kick drum comes out of the full level and then with shift and hitting it it becomes orange then it will be 50% velocity, so that's half the level. That's a good ballpark figure to start with the drums. Have the kick out in full and do the rest of the drums in the middle and then it sounds like this. This will work all the time. When you add stuff to this, you should always hear everything you're hearing in the kick right now. So you hear that letter D in the beginning, the, 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 you know? For my liking, it could be a little bit less than the thud, probably just process it this way but you know in the club it's cool to have an extra sort of transients because it will work the sound system in terms of when you work different um, angles in terms of what else is possible with the sound right okay now this is the drums well I've, I've created this track uh, created this sound on this um, mini look XD it's my favorite synth ever why because I can get to making certain sounds pretty fast now I've created that radio head um, string line I created that and now I've played something else with it so it's really cool because you get the feeling of something that you know already but you get to play something else so that's sound design which is a different topic and maybe for another video but you get the idea now I played something with it Now when you get a sound like this, that already resembles something that you know of a record that's obviously been very uh, huge, in this case this uh, um, Everything is Right Place by uh, Radiohead, then you know for a fact that this is already going to sound amazing. This is only so, but again, there's another trick that I see a lot of people fall into, another pitfall is that whatever they like, they just turn up way too loud. So I'll hear this. But as you can hear, it pretty much drowns out the kick drum. So in terms of leveling, I will put this here. I'll look at the filters. And then I'll add the kick to it and make sure that there's a nice balance where it just sits well. Another thing to note is the volume that you're listening on. If you keep tweaking the volume knob, it's going to give you ear fatigue pretty fast. Now, any um, human being, well-trained, will still uh, have ear fatigue within 30 minutes. So it's normal for your ears to just go really crazy. So the better the sound engineer is trained, the longer he can go without ear fatigue, but it's still something that occurs. But if you want to have longevity on the way you listen, keep your volume 
at a normal level. There's another thing where a lot of people think that they have to feel the music. You'll feel the music when you get to the club. When you're making the track, it's dominant that you're hearing the music, not feeling the music. So keep listening to it and you'll train yourself to not get emotionally attached to the track and hear subtle differences, which is exactly where you want to be if you want to just like enhance your sound quality, right? So we know what the makeup of the sound is. This sound is twofold. There's a lot of envelope generation on this sound so that if I open it up, it becomes screamy. So I know that I've got that in the pocket, right? So I'll keep it like here. And with radio, it's probably this. But I will keep it here. I'll keep the filter down. And then I'll just play the filter and see if there are any frequencies in this sound that will also um, um, resemble what is on the kick. Because the kick obviously has got a sound as well with that little tick on it that's in the mid-range. So this might cross over there. Let's find out. I have deliberately um, overdriven this sound slightly. It's not like I'm making cabins, everything's going to start sounding like it's hardcore or something. But you see the light blinking because this analog desk has a little bit of a ring to it when I overdrive it a little bit. Again, this should be it. I should not go overboard and do it further. I'll just uh, lower the kick so you can hear what happens if um, if I am uh, toning down a little bit, so with the pad mixer here. Let's lower this. Listen to the kick. It becomes neat, it becomes manageable, but that's not what we want. We, want, we don't want neat and manageable, we want a kick in the butt, right? So I'm driving it up until I see the light blinking. This too much, as you can hear. This should be it. So from the minute you think it's tilting already, tone it down a little bit. This is minus 6.33 decibels, if it says anything. And then, obviously, as I said, the, the hi-hat is going to be slightly lower than that, so. I've also, manage to level everything up in the mixer so that I don't have to fiddle about with it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I level it in the MPC so I don't have to fiddle about with it here. So I want all the faders to be open completely full. Yes, yeah? it says zero here, it says five, it says 10. Obviously any uh, music education will tell you, no, stick within the range and blah, 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 sweet spots, this and that. If you're performing live, you want to flick this, bam, out, two, three, four, go with a filter. You know what I mean? That's what you would want to do. Now, I deliberately did it in this order. The kick first, the rest of my drums, and then I stuck the music in here because this invokes emotion, but at the same time, it eats up a lot of the space. A bass line is easy to manage, a lead line is easy to manage. Those pads, not so much, and they are pretty wide in where they sit. They're sitting here, but they're also... And with my envelope generation and the attack on the sound, it becomes more percussive so that if I might go down too low and the sound starts to um, wither a bit because I'm adding more sounds and you get used to whatever, whatever's playing in the sound, it goes like, okay, um, what the hell's going on there? You will still hear the percussive nature of the Whatever it is that you play is also very important. What I've played here, and we'll go in and see if I can find uh, the track that's playing right now. Uh, Mini Log XD here. The Mini Log XD line has got this one note that's constantly playing. Boom, da, 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 boom. And I've done it on purpose because when you really want to filter in that sound, it becomes very hypnotizing. So this, I can 
have to lay by my baseline as well, uh, so that there's some sort of a unified feeling starting in within the track. Um, I do tend to look at the music different from the drums. In my mind, they're two separate things. Drums need to just sit where they sit, and sometimes if it sounds whack in a headphone, it might sound amazing on a sound system. So don't really go overboard with trying to just fix stuff with in-ears and headphones. Your ears are not made to listen to the music up that close when you're using cans. So it might sound great on a headphone, you get to the club, but it's not going to sound well right there. So try and also keep it on the same level. Uh, but if you have got speakers to work on, then work on speakers as well. Okay, we're going to see if we can fix in some sort of a baseline of, of some sorts, which is here. And I see that I have to play bass. Okay, bass, so let's see. Now, this is another trick that I do with my bass lines. If I want to want my bass line to sound well, again, um, this is the frequency spectrum right here with the 20 hertz and the 20k, you know? Within that range, at certain points, things are starting to overlap and, and start to just cancel each other out. So a thing is saturation. Now this is something that you're not pouring as, as if you were pouring salt somewhere. So what I've done is I've got this small diode clipper cable, courtesy of Constantin and Kink. I'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> It's very DIY, but what they've done is like there's a diode in here, which simply means that if I am cranking up the volume or the filter, the bass line is going to start sounding uh, a little bit different. This is something, find some DIY um, stuff online and see what you can do. It depends on what kind of diode you stick in there, but obviously there's a lot of stuff that you can do so that if my sound starts to crackle a bit in certain areas, mainly when I start to go very low and there's a rich, big, frequency um, um, thing happening and obviously the diode gets activated a little bit more than if it would if I'm higher up the scale which means that sound is going to get pronounced a little bit more because the bass notes is also where the emphasis is so you can emphasize a little bit more what's happening let's see if we can try and come up with some bass line then Simple. Let's record it. Okay, that's there. Now let's look at the sound. There's two oscillators here. Turn this off kick off you can hear it now this is hmm there's not much happening at the moment listen to what a diode does right now it's just the sound but listen let's make sure the LFO is not um, Doing anything stupid. So it, it just becomes a little bit fatter, right? Lowering it. So I'm lowering the, just the mix between the two oscillators, oscillator one, oscillator two. Um, listen very closely. Let's take out this as well so you can hear it. Listen to that crossover point. There. You can <laughs> hear it come in. Another crackling knob. So it's just a sound here, and then here. And here it gets like this kind of vibe. That's what's sounding amazing on the drums. So let's try it out. A 
And then you lower it here if, it, if need be. Load the filter. I went with a sustained bass line. I can play shorter notes. Then obviously that rule of saturation does something different. But at the same time, let's focus on that for a second right now because I want to make a melodic techno kind of vibe. So, okay, everything is, is cool. How do you know if stuff is not working for you? You can easily figure that out because if your kick drum starts to sound like ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, it means that certain frequencies are canceling stuff out. So everything needs to be very audible. If for some reason you have ear fatigue and you still want to finish the track and you don't know where it is that you're going, you can place your thumb on the rim of the speaker if need be. It doesn't, doesn't work with Genelix because I can't get to the woofer, but you'll get to the woofer on, on certain speakers and you'll just place your thumb on it. Don't hold the speaker down because you're going to ruin your speakers, but then you'll play it and you'll feel a thud. And think of the letter D. The letter D for the, that's the, what you won't like to feel on the kick drum. You, 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 after a while, you really, really feel all the different elements of the bunch of the dynamics on your finger, then you know where you are, right? So that's how I've um, figured out what works on bigger sound systems just by simply just like going in that way. Strings. So, I love my mini guitar. I don't want this to do completely all kinds of different stuff. I just want it to be bass and bass alone. That's why I love it so much. But because this thing sits in a club and you can really rattle, the, rattle the, 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 the glasses hanging off the bar opposite you in the back of the club, which is really nice. But this is what it does, right? Now, I said I had different things coming from um, um, the Akai as well. There is something that plays on the Acid Box 3. So this output 3 and 4 has different stuff that plays. And I get to it. I don't want to go in here and map out the filters because I do think that Erica Sins has made an amazing filter. The Acid Box 3, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this thing comes out of the, uh, um, what was it, Polyvox Synth? I think they modeled this filter and it just, this is, for once it's stereo filter, ah, thank you. So that's cool. And it really, really, really does the trick. So if I'm lowering this more, and I'm opening up this, see what plays. Now, a good thing to do is to go to my um, pad mixer or channel mixer or pad mute, track mute even. This is where all the stuff that plays on the track is embedded, so they got the no drums. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. This is a way to perform as well. So you don't have to go in and tweak stuff. And this is a way to get your sound going um, without extensive sound checking as well, right? but it needs to be a jigsaw. So the more stuff you stick in there, the thinner it needs to be because it needs to just like live alongside something else, right? But the trick is how much stuff can I hear still? This is also um, an assignment you should try and do. Um, I do it with my students. I'll tell them, listen to the track on the radio and just trying to pinpoint how many sounds you are hearing. It's, it's harder than you think. Even on the intro, certain house tracks where only five or six tracks are playing, um, try and figure out how many sounds you're actually hearing. If you can determine those sounds, it's easier to pinpoint where you want to stick your own sound as well. And then you can enhance whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish with your track. Now, I don't really overly complicate the tracks that I'm making, but they still sound advanced because of the sheer CIA kind of stuff that I'm trying to do here. I'm, I'm mask stuff, I mimic stuff, I'm there, I'm not there, you know what I mean? I'm in and out. So there's different things. And the filters obviously act as some sort of an EQ. This EQ, Something really needs to sound like crap before I'm going to use this EQ. And then again, with a $230, $250 mixer, I probably don't expect too much from this EQ section right here. It's going to be cool, it's going to do what it, do, uh, do what it does, but it's not like I will get an, a synthesizer that's twice the, the price of this 
that is going to enhance that sound. So I want it to just like be my summer and everything comes out here and that'll be that, right? Okay, um, yeah, playing around with the filters. So this one. Another thing to improve the sound, I'm taking out this. Let's take out the bass as well. So those two sounds play together, right? We've got this. I'll play it to you in solo because I hear sometimes that it might be hard to follow if I'm sticking different sounds together. Listen to this. This sound comes out of the darkness, is what I say. So on the Erica Sense filter, there's no um, resonance. I just kept everything just down. You know, there's no Eldalivos playing, but you don't hear it, right? I can put the Elevo in there, but no. So I kept it like this. Then you open it up. And what I love about this sound is that between 11 and 12 o'clock, there's a lot of happening. Listen. Here also, but say this is, this is really turning it off. In the mix it will be buried, right? So listening to it here, I'm trying to memorize how this filter behaves when I open it up. Because sound quality also has to do with perception most of the time, and if you can act like more is happening than actually is happening by doing something so magical that people go like, whoa, what just happened? That is also a trick to enhance your sound quality or at least the perception of you doing better than you're actually doing. Now, this is a set it, forget it kind of sound on the Mini Log XD, um, but it helps this big lead line that's going to be very epic, very dramatic. You can hear, so from 11 to 12, it's basically amplitude almost and then from 11 uh, from 12 o'clock onwards that's where the rezzo starts to come in so that's what you feel when you're in a la la land zone um, you know exactly what that does if you have been to any house parties so you know what I'm talking about so we've got these 11 to 12 keep this in mind I'm going to open up this sound again here we'll play this in solo as well Listen to this filter, listen to what this does. So, there's a lot happening here. When it's completely down, you will hear some sort of a timpani kind of muffled down sound. From the minute I start to open it up, when I get to a quarter two, it's length. So this thing does a lot of envelope as well, right? It gets a little brighter, but mostly what happens is that the sound got longer. You have to keep that in mind because those sounds on the Akai, on the acid box are already loud, uh, long as well. So you'll see in a second how these two things can trick um, can help each other, but can also uh, cancel each other out. Opening the filter up more, all of a sudden it becomes very aggressive. Not too bright, but still aggressive. This does a lot in a club. I'm on 11 o'clock now, so here you go. It starts at, what is it? Seven. Nine o'clock is the next step. 11 o'clock is the next step. And then from one o'clock onwards, it comes in their own time. So keep that in mind. So we open it up this sound as well. And what I found, what I really like is, from the minute this thing is on 12 o'clock here on the acid box, the sound coming from the Akai, these percussive elements, when this filter is down, is helping this thing. So, do do do, those cores are helping each other. Again, this works wonders with. So I will not open this thing up past 12 o'clock. First I'm starting to open this up until nine o'clock, what we said, right? So, we're getting into the club. Whoop. I'm going to add the bass line later because this is masking what I'm doing. I want you to hear it, right? So, open this up slowly. Listen to this. This goes to nine o'clock. Now this one is gone, the acid box. Open this up, 11 o'clock. 
This is louder. We're going to turn this down and open this up. There we go. And once you master this, the whole track will just lift up, right? Let's do that thing, same thing again. But then with the bass line involved. Play the bass. Same thing. This goes to 9 o'clock. This, this goes to 12 first, this one. Yeah, and that's certain tricks that work. Obviously, there's more different, there's more things that you can do in order to enhance what it is that you want to do. Um, this is how I'm looking at sounds. Uh, there's still a lead line that I uh, didn't get to, uh, but the subsequent can also do something else on top of it. But most of it is like, it's perception, it's getting there. But it's, it's basically setting your drums in a certain way, adding sounds to it, and just like gradually adding stuff. Don't overshoot. Be very careful and don't be in a hurry. I like to welcome Patrick to the community and he's found his way through surfing to patreon.com slash analog kitchen and in turn crossing the bridge into discord territory. Now we've got a nice well and cool growing community there where there's a lot of people that are actually talking shop we're talking about how to work your set, how to enhance the sound, how to travel, what cases to use, what gear to use, gas, what have you all kinds of stuff that we talk about in the synthesizer realm. It's a really cool, tight-knit community. There's a lot of respect going on there. You can play your demos. You can have people just comment on that. People will help you out. It's a really cool community of like-minded folks. And also there's challenges. I mean, the challenges that I'm doing is that, you know, um, you can um, uh, create tracks that eventually could get released on uh, the label Kitchen Club Records, obviously. That's one thing. Um, you can just do remixes, you can remix other people's stuff. So it is a cool community where we just don't only talk stuff. We, can, uh, we also get involved and um, try to just better ourselves as musicians. Um, on the Mixer project front, I spoke to Ferry this week and he told me that he's absolutely happy with the way things are turning out. So he said that he's finished the master segment is looking at the filters there's some filters involved in there so um, in case you just didn't hear about it i am in the process of developing a mixer for dollars uh, producers because um yeah you either have to just bring a, a studio mixer or a club mixer to the stage which is sometimes not really what you're looking for what you might be looking for and to overcome sound issues as well um, i thought to just like make it into some sort of a summing mixer so the eq section is going to be more filter based because if you have to still start to figure stuff out uh, on the fly there mixing it you probably have to just go back to the drawing board and figure out how your sound can get better so this video is actually going to just like uh, help you out in that sense so um, that mixer is looking absolutely amazing. I'm still not sure whether it's going to be six channels or eight channels. Master segment section is on there. Um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's one of those things where you can just like easily hook your stuff up to it and just get cracking immediately, you know? Um, yeah, so more news on that. Keep your eyes on this space. If you made it this far into the video, you're an absolute superstar. My name is Analog Kitchen. I thank you for watching. I'll catch you either in the chat, which is after the video, if you're watching this live premiere, or I'll catch you next week on another video. You know where? Same spot, same place. Analog Kitchen, out! Peace.